All right, thanks for coming back and joining us on our Circuits 1 tut tutorials. We are talking about basic circuits and we are going from the most basic and starting to go into the more complicated. So right now we are going to be learning about branches, nodes, and loops. And we need to have this fundamental understanding of what those are because as soon as we start getting into more complicated things, uh, you're going to have to know what those are to be able to treat something right and be able to say, oh, that is a shared node or that is a loop. And it's going to be very important later and it's going to be intuitive, but we have to set that foundation foundation first before it can become intuitive. So the first thing is branches and the bran a branch is basically any two terminal device. And so once you start doing basic circuits, most everything is going to be two terminal, but very quickly you're going to get into multiple terminal things like op amps, things like that. But to start out with, we can say any two terminal device would be something like a voltage source. It would be a resistor, uh, a capacitor. And notice how all of these have two terminals, you even have an inductor, which with my horrible handwriting is scarily similar to a resistor, but it is very different. So any uh, electronic component that has two devices, or excuse me, two terminals is a branch. Okay, now let's talk about the next thing, which is a node. So a node is basically where any two or more things are connected. So I'm going to connect these right here. And we usually put a dot at a node, but that can be kind of confusing because it's more of just an area. So right now, this voltage source is connected to this resistor. And so we say that they are connected right here and there is a node and only these two things are connected to that node. However, we can bring in this capacitor and now this capacitor is also sharing one of its terminals is connected to the same node. And this is where that dot may be confusing because well, this whole thing right here is a node. And even though we do a lot of circuits with 90 degree angles, things like that, you could bring wires in from whatever, have weird shapes. It's mostly just the fact that electrically, these terminals are all connected together and we assume that there is zero resistance connecting this terminal to that terminal to that terminal. So if we go over here, we can create another node. And so, you know, I'd be tempted to put that node right here, right here, right there. But again, this node just is this connection, which says that these three devices share that node and these two devices share that node. And then if we throw in another one, this is still the same node. Now, if I wanted to confuse myself, I could go over here and throw in another resistor that is still the same node because we are still assuming that entire area is connected and that there is no resistance. But as soon as I put another resistor right there and then go down like that, this is a different node, but haha, the joke's on me. That node is now the same as all of these. So this resistor, that resistor, that inductor, and that voltage source all now share this one node right there. Now, again, confusing myself. If I stuck a resistor in right there, that would be a separate node, but then we'd still be sharing this node down there. Now this is really important and it's very easy to get yourself confused. So it's one thing where you just have to take your time and look at it. And again, with time, it'll, it'll become second nature. You won't even think about it consciously. You'll just say, oh yeah, those are connected. Those are connected and that's separated. But it's, it's really good to get a good foundation because if you do mess this up, it's going to screw up all of your uh, equations because some of the things depend very much on where the nodes are. So here we have this node right here, shared right there, the, this node right here, we have this node, and then we have this node down there. So I think I've beat nodes to death. If you have any more confusion, go to circuitbread.com down in the description, uh, where again, we have all of this stuff explained. So it, we, uh, you can get a different perspective. Again, we're trying to say the same thing in different words just to make it so it meshes together and hopefully it'll click with you better. Let's move on to loops. So a loop is basically just anywhere where you start in one spot, go all the way through something without crossing yourself and come back to the same spot. So let's just start with this node. If I came up here through the capacitor, went down here, went through this inductor, went through the voltage source and came back there, that would be one loop. Or I could go through the capacitor, go through the resistor, come back there, that'd be another loop, all the way through here, another loop, or I could just even just have that small loop right there. So a loop is basically anything that 
You start in one spot, go through. Again, you don't go through anything twice. You don't cross over yourself, but you do come all the way back to yourself. Now, this is interesting because any of those are loops, but when you're doing something like KVL, Kirchhoff's Voltage Law and Mesh Analysis, you need to have a loop that doesn't enclose any other loops. So I'm gonna actually write through. So if I go through and I say, hey, this capacitor goes through that inductor, through the voltage source and back, unfortunately, that includes two loops because that could be one loop and then that could be one loop. And the same things, if I decided to go all the way out here, that's one loop, but it's enclosing a loop here and closing a loop here. And so even though any of these are considered loops, you do need to be careful to realize when a loop encloses another loop uh, for certain circumstances. But just saying, yes, that's a loop, it's any of these and more. So, okay, we have now talked about branches, two terminal devices, nodes, that place where you assume there's absolutely no resistance and those terminals are connected, and then loops, which are basically flows where you can imagine uh, current is flowing and starting on one spot and ending in another spot. So let's go directly into why in particular nodes are so important by doing series and parallel. So get a new piece of paper. So you'll hear a lot the terms series and parallel and they're both related to how nodes are connected. So let's start with series. So series is where you have two or more branches connected and they share the same node and it share the same node exclusively. Now, when I say more, that might be confusing. So I think the best way would just illustrate it with a single thing like that. Okay, you can assume that's an inductor or a resistor, whatever you feel like. So there is a node here that connects them and there's only this node that connects them. And so you can say that these two are in series and because of that, any current that you have flowing through them is going to be shared. So if you wanna put this as I1 and this as I2, you know that I1 equals I2. Now the reason it can get a little bit more complicated is because let's say we had a, another resistor we just pull out here and you go like that. And then you say, okay, the, this resistor is in series with these two resistors and then it would basically be let's say that's I3, then we'd know that I1 equals I2 plus I3. That's obviously very, very important because that's going to be fundamental in our understanding of how to do circuit analysis. But the key thing about series is that they are sharing a node and they are exclusively sharing a node and that the current through one of the elements is going to be the same as the current through the other element or the other set of elements if it's in this. And so I'm I'm a little bit tempted to say, okay, just ignore that because that's gonna make things more complicated. This is the most important thing to remember, but you will be able to use this concept and say, okay, now I can do that and just use the idea of one thing or multiple things in series with another set of multiple things. And it's not gonna be nearly as easy as just one in series with another, but it's still super helpful. But series, current is same through two. Same, same, both, through both. And then we come to parallel and we see if I can count my L's. Yeah, that looks right. So parallel is separate from this. This is where you have a device or two devices that are sharing both nodes. So remember you have a two terminal device here. So let's do our one resistor and then do another resistor. And then if we connect it here, we've got one node here and connect it here, got another node here. We know that these are in parallel because they're both sharing both nodes. So this is interesting because unlike this one where they have the same current through it, you have the same voltage across it. So if you say plus minus, and this is V2 plus minus, this is V1, then you know that V1 is equal to V2 because they have the same connection points on both sides. Now, they're very much, you have absolutely no idea if they have the same current through them. If the resistance is the same, then technically they should have the exact same current through it, but you, that's usually not the case. And so 
The only thing with parallel is that you know that they have the same voltage over them. So voltage is same across both. So this is the easiest way to simplify our most simplistic circuits by saying, okay, I know my voltage here, I know my voltage here, as long as I have the resistance, you don't have to really do any analysis. You can just say, well, it's the same voltage, let me just do some Ohm's law and I'm done and I'm good to go. Uh, I forgot my E on voltage. There we go. Now that's spelled better. But again, these are super, super fundamental. You'll see these all the time and it's just like you can kind of make things more complicated here, you can make things more complicated here. We could say that these are these two parallel sets of resistors are in series with, e with each other, and you can use that to simplify things and uh, to make things better. But we are not going to worry about that right now. I just wanted to introduce that concept and make things well, more straightforward for you. So when you're dealing with series or parallel resistors, uh, and this actually kind of applies to inductors and capacitors later, uh, just in some concepts, but I don't want to worry about that right now. I just want to focus on resistors. There are certain things you can do to simplify those series resistors and those parallel resistors into mathematically basically one resistor, which will make things a lot, a lot more simple for you. So with that, I'd like to jump in really quick. Series is, is the most straightforward. So uh, simplify series resistors. So if you have a resistor in series with another resistor, and you got that node right there, you got that node right there, and let's call this R1, call this R2. This is, this is so incredibly simple. To get the equivalent series resistance, so R equivalent, you just add them together, R1 plus R2. And that's, that's really it. So if you have anything like this, that's, it's a beautiful thing because you're like, ah, okay. Now if that's 10 and that's 20, you just say that's 30 and you can model it as one resistor. And then whenever you're doing your analysis, you can just assume, okay, well, my current is just, there we go. Um, my current is just my voltage plus minus over my resistance instead of having to do, okay, Let's do a voltage divider between the two and find the current through one and then figure out, um, what do I, I don't know my voltage in between, so how do I figure out that voltage? Okay, so I have to do, so simplifying a series resistor is not only extremely easy, but extremely helpful. So that is something you definitely, definitely want to do whenever you come across a series resistor and there's no reason that you need to know that middle voltage right there. If you do need to know that middle voltage right there, then you can't really do it because otherwise you just doesn't really work there. But otherwise, yes, use that all the time. Simplifying a parallel resistor is a little bit more complicated. So simplify parallel resistors. Okay, you know what that meant, says. Okay, so now you have two resistors. Wow, it's a beautiful day. One, R2. Now, for these, there's actually a separate equation that is not as simple as simple addition. To find the equivalent resistance, you actually do 1 over the R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And to make that more general, you can just, oh, I ran out of space, that was poor planning. Um, you could say 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 dot 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 1 over Rn. So basically you have to take those resistances, invert them, add them, and then, and this is key, you need to invert it again. I don't know how many times I have or have seen other people, they just invert R1, so it's 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, add them together, and then just, okay, that's it, that's the equivalent resistance. No, no, you gotta invert that last one or you're not gonna have the right answer. Why did I put another two right there? That is supposed to be an N. That is something I get for talking and speaking at the exact same time. And the reason I put that dot 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 RN is because you can very easily have many things in parallel. Wow. <laughs> Making that as confusing as possible. R3, R4, dot dot dot, 
all the way on. So this is our way of making it so that no matter how many parallel resistors you have, you can easily put it in there. Now, a lot of the times that you're dealing this, you simply have two together. And so with some not so fancy math that I'm not going to do here, the way to find the equivalent resistance for two resistors is actually a lot more straightforward. You just do R1 plus R2 over R1 times R2. So this only works with, uh, with two. If you have any more, this is obviously not gonna work because you don't have anything for R3. But you know, the fact that the majority of the cases you're only gonna have two resistors in parallel, this makes it a little bit simpler than trying to do all of that and trying to invert everything, which I don't know about you, fractions I don't really do well in my head, and I'd much rather do just some addition and some multiplication. And then finally, the, the simplest case is if, if, R1 is equal to R2, which this should be pretty obvious looking at that, then our equivalent is equal to R1 or R2 over two. It just divides it in half. Now the interesting thing that I wanna mention for both of these is that if you have two resistors in series, the equivalent resistance is always going to be higher than the highest resistor. So if you have 1,000 ohms and one ohm, well, then it's gonna be 1,000 and one ohms. So by putting things in series, you're increasing the resistance. Whereas with parallel resistors, the opposite is true. The resistance, the equivalent resistance, will always be lower than the lowest resistance. So if you had 100 ohms and one ohm, it's gonna be less than, in, than one ohm. And I'm, I don't know why I threw that example out there, because I'm not doing that in my head, but no matter what the equivalent resistance, or excuse me, what the resistances are, the equivalent resistance will be lower than the lowest of those resistances. So this is a good way to drop the equivalent resistance by putting them in parallel, and this is a good way to increase the equivalent resistance by putting them in series. And that's it. So that is how you simplify series resistors and parallel resistors, and you will use this all the time. It you do it a couple of times, it'll become intuitive, it'll become easy. Just make sure that you use one of these three just make sure you use an equation that actually works for your situation. Make sure that you invert the end result if you're using this equation, because again, that happens all the time, and, and you'll be good. Uh, these are pretty straightforward, and this is how you simplify the most simplistic circuits, but even once you get into the more complicated circuits that you need to use KCL or KVL to, uh, to solve, you can sometimes simplify them before you actually jump into KCL and KVL, and it'll make your life a lot easier, make the math a lot easier. So that's definitely something we always wanna do because anything that's easier is less likely to screw up. I hope this was super helpful. If it was, give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, all that jazz, and keep on following us as we go through this basic circuits tutorials, and we will catch you in the next one.